rip him to shreds. Way's tyranny ends today. Well, it's been a bit since I, the last Warriors review, hasn't it? Mostly because they all flopped in the review I did of every Samurai Warriors I worked so hard on to make, which took almost a whole year to pull off, that was also over three hours long, completely flopped as well. So I wasn't exactly in the mood to touch another Warriors game. Absurd. But with the upcoming release of what looks to be one of the worst Warriors games in the entire series history, that is Dynasty Warriors Origins, I figured I might as well get the rest of the series over with so I can say I reviewed every Dynasty Warriors game before January of next year. But my ideal has no place for doubt. So today, we'll finally tackle Dynasty Warriors 5, a game I've always hated and tried to get into multiple times throughout my life. But I just couldn't. Well, today, I'm forcing myself once again to play this game and see if I can find anything positive to say about it. As a longtime fan of these games, since I was a kid, it's getting harder and harder to enjoy anything of this series as it continues down the wrong path. I fear DWO, but enough about what could possibly be be the worst Dynasty Warriors game ever made that somehow top DW9. For now, let's focus on our efforts onto DW5, another terrible game in the long running series. The time is now. Master Liu Bei, first of all, allow these flames to light your path. The road ahead will be long, but the destination is certain. Every Dynasty Warriors game comes with new characters since the second game. Some entries give us more than others. DW4 was disappointing in only adding in 3 in comparison to DW2 with 14 and DW3 adding 13. <laughs> so what do we get in DW5? Well we have a whopping 6. And they all suck. The honor of my family's name, smeared in the mud. In later games, they get more fleshed out. In fact, I'd say in DW7, these newcomers are great. I enjoyed Shinkai, Tao Pi, and Lin Tong. The rivalry friendship between Lin Tong and Gan Ning is great. Shinkai being serious and devoted to her job to protect and train Liu Shan and is the daughter of Jean Fei. She definitely took after her father in DW7, but here, she's just voiced by one of the Xiao sisters and it's nails on a chalkboard. You can't take her seriously at all. I am Xin Kai. My father is none other than Zhang Fei. Although this is my first battle, my father and the others have been fighting for Shut up, shut up, shut up. Tao P is okay, I'd say he's the best of the newcomers. Alright, the newcomers are Tao Pi, Shinkai, Lin Tong, Guan Ping, Pan Dai, and Zhou Si. Zhou Si, who is rarely ever included in the games given he has no real purpose. Hmm. Think he could take Pan Tong with him? That guy only ever has a single stage and dies in it. Well, well, well. It seems that this place marks the end of my journey. Zhuge Liang, if I too were a dragon, would I have flown higher? <sighs> I think I'll just sit down and rest here a while. He's dead. Tao P has the least offending voice and isn't irritating with his character. He's just a younger Tao Tao and that's good. He's also quite aware of Sima Yi's deception and the dynamic between the two is great. Too bad they fucked up Sima Yi's voice. More on that later. I'm not sure I... I understand you. Hmm. <laughs> For now, let's cover the combat system, which has seen slight improvements over DW4. 
and its more restrictive lock-on lock combat system, now things are more fluid. But you still cannot move the camera around freely, and it can get in the way while fighting. Honestly, not much has changed with the combat. There's still that classic clunkiness to it, given this is the classic era of Warriors games. It's just slightly better than DW4. This means horses are still terrible and not worth using unless you play a stage that's unnecessarily huge. Even the Nomin campaign was downgraded, making elephants no longer desirable to use to destroy blockades, because they're now scripted for an ambush. Yeah, you can no longer change up the battlefields anymore, like in DW3 and DW4. Lame. The bow itself is still a pain to use and not worth it either. You can never target what you want and will always aim for and hit worthless soldiers instead of the mounted officers or any archers on towers. The one good thing I could say about DW5 has going for it, combat wise, is the introduction of true Musuo and Musuo Rage item. This rage will give you armor and increased attack, allowing you for a true Musuo attack as well. Hit me with everything you got! Not Brainless fools! You think I'll, I'll just roll over you. and die? Something you may have noticed is that, yes, Empire bases are now part of the base game. Yeah, the Empire's game mechanic of bases are now a core feature of all Dynasty Warrior games going forward since DW5. Thanks, Tecmo Koi! I have let my father and brother down. So, you now have to run around and take out all the bases around the battlefield, otherwise the enemy gets an advantage but you never do, and you cannot capture most of them. Instead, you just clear them out till the enemy comes back and reclaims the empty base. It's not good, and I hate the base mechanics here. It was already annoying in Empire's expansions. Why did they feel the need to bring it to the base game as well? You can't forgive me. Well, that's more your problem than it is mine. And that's it combat-wise. There's not much else to talk about outside of the fact that the AI won't stop spamming Musou attacks themselves during combat, plus the AI is aggressive, so I'll give them credit for that at the least. I enjoy how unforgiving the AI can be. Almost as tough as DW3, but not quite as unfair. Though that unfairness was part of the charm of DW3, much like Mario Kart Wii item unbalance was absurd, but in a good way. Step aside, please. You're in my husband's way. This brings us to the English dub. Compared to DW4, DW5 has a lot of hidden misses. I mean, they fixed Jean He. I'll show him. I think it's time I paid them a visit. Don't you? Ah, yes. Go forth, Zhang He. Yes, my lord. But in turn, they ruined Jian Wei and Sima Yi as prime examples. On top of Sun Jian, as we all know, the best Sun Jian was Steve Motherfucking Blum. He has good eyes, that one. 
Some voices fit their des designated characters, while others do not. On top of that, some are just reading the scripts instead of putting effort into it. The best moments are usually with most of the shoe characters, as their voices are pretty much all good. During the assault on Fun Castle, the Wu army surrounded General Guan Yu and... It can't be. Guan Yu... Bring me my sword at once! Everyone! Begin preparing for war! No, my lord! Our enemy is Wei! It would not be just to attack Defeat Wu. Wei, and Wu will have no choice other than to surrender. Please reconsider. None of that matters to me now. Neither of you understand my pain. I must do it for the death of my brother. Who must pay? Of course, not everyone is perfect as they screw up the introduction of Shinkai by giving her the most annoying female English anime dub voice I ever heard. Like. Jesus fucking Christ! Not you. You're gonna be okay? Now don't be getting yourself hurt or nothing. I'll be fine. You're the one that better watch out. Come to either your father or me if it gets too dangerous. Okay. Alright then, let's go. Alright, on to the story mode, or Musou mode, if you will. I mean, good lord, what were they thinking? They took the kingdom storytelling of old and removed it in favor of individual story modes. Which, on paper, sounds fine. To remember, this means you'll play all 40 officers of Wei, Shu, and Wu. Fuck that. Indeed. This also doesn't really fix the issue of repeated battles. You'll still play the same Chur B, Hulao Gate, Yellow Turban Rebellion, Hefei, and more. So why did they do this? Just keep it kingdom base, and before every battle, we can swap our officers for another, just like in DW4. Just talk about a downgrade. Who are you? I won't forgive such rude words. Speaking of downgrades, they made each character have only five random stages. Yeah. You only get 5 stages with that character, and you don't know what they will have till you play through the entire section selection. But of course, you can expect repeats, so again, why the individual story modes? Very well. On this third visit, allow me to receive you. Mm. From what I've experienced, you only get a story mode for Wei, Shu, and Wu officers, and since it's only a small selection of battles, get used to repeats on both sides. I played the same battle of Chur B with no differences whatsoever with both Tao Pi and Su Xuan. I also did the same battle of Hefei Castle with both characters. I wasn't having fun replaying the same battles with no differences between several officers. If you're going to do individual stories, you need to add unique encounters, cutscenes, and dialogue for each one that plays in said battles. This way, there's an incentive to play in every story. But no, that's asking for too much from Omega Force. <laughs> you coward! All storytelling, from the most part, is visual novel style. Yep, they just had to downgrade the storytelling to mostly visual novel narration by the character themselves. Land of G, I joined Yuan Shao's army so that I could serve in the campaign against the Yellow. <laughs> it's lazy and boring, so after a few of these, I just started skipping them so I could get to the gameplay. Rarely was there a single cinematic, whether in game or pre rendered. Come on, Omega Force, why are you so lazy? If you're making a sequel, you need to improve upon the last entry. Not downgrade things making one question why they ever bothered 
with this entry in the first place. Yeah! Lubu, don't let them near me! Free mode returns so you can play all the stages and the game with any character you want. The con is while all stages are available at first, you cannot play both sides of the battle. You can only play one, and this is where the certain characters who have no story can be played. Mostly the other faction characters who are kicked in the balls going forward in the set with the series. Hmm. So this is what death feels like. Challenge mode is a part of this game where you can play a humongous amount of modes to challenge yourself. All four of them! So what are these modes and what are they like? Eh, three out of four of them fucking suck so why not go over them, huh? Aha, he's kidding. Popcorn? The first mode of challenge mode is Bridge Melee. Yep, the one mode I absolutely hated in other games is back and it sucks even more. So, then the rest. This combat system doesn't play well with this concept. But anyways, your goal is to knock people off of the platforms. You cannot kill them, so you have to hit them non-stop till they fall off. But of course, you're more likely to fall off with them once you do. Game over. Time Attack has you running around trying to defeat well, exactly 100 officers and soldiers as fast as possible, which isn't that fast given your story mode stats don't carry over into challenge mode like all other games challenge modes. You just run around slowly and kill all the people in the map and that's it. The faster you do it, the better your ranking. It's not worth it. This game's sluggish nature makes this more extremely boring. Sudden Death was the most unique and challenging mode of the game. The concept is you knocking out everyone with a single hit, but in turn, they could do the same thing to you. The tension of being easily killed makes this one stand out. I was actually having fun. Though I should have chosen a faster, less tankish character than Guan Yu. Enemies keep spawning into the force. Soldiers in large groups and officers patrolling around seeking you out. This was neat. The difficulty itself will increase over time too, with archers and sorcerers appearing eventually. The very last of challenge mode is my favorite, as it's just killing as many officers and soldiers within a 10 minute timer. You're in a small area with cramped barricade aisles, having officers spawn in with countless amounts of troops after you defeat them. <laughs> Though the AI can be questionable as it just wanted to run around the area most of the time, not giving me any opportunity to hit them unless I trigger an officer's aggression. Lu Bu will appear every now and then to throw you off, and it's just simple fun. It takes what Dynasty Warriors does best and just lets you go hog wild for 10 minutes straight. Take this! 
if you can survive the time limit and get a good amount of KOs, you'll be the new record holder in the end. By default, the record is a measly 1000 KOs, which isn't that hard to break here. There's just so many enemies to ensure you'll break that record in no time. <laughs> I never really liked DW5's soundtrack, it was always a mixed bag of garbage generic rock and techno with no real identity of its own, you'd probably think it was YouTube audio library song based on how simple and generic most of it is, I'd rather just not even bother showcasing the music because it's that bad. Pathetic. But for the sake of helping you understand, here's some of it. I must approach this calmly, time to retreat. Versus mode doesn't make a return in this title, so there's no way to fight another player. For those of you few out there who actually cared for it in the older games of DW3 and DW4. Just something worth mentioning. Let's move on. Long guy, let's win the day and then drink until morning. Whatever you say, that sounds mighty good to me. While this review ended up being quite negative, I have hoped that the last few games I have to cover will end up working out much better since those are the newer games. Those being Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires, Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends Complete Edition, Dynasty Warriors 9, and Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires. Once I finish these up, I can move on to other projects. <laughs> I shall leave them to you for now. I'm hoping to have all of these done before Dynasty Wars Origin launches next year in January. This way, I can review every DW game before a new one arrives and adds onto the list that's already bloated enough, much like the sheer amount of Warriors games that are out there. No seriously, there's more Dynasty Warrior games than Call of Duty. That's just sad. <sighs> I'm sure to be the laughing stock of future peoples. At the end of the day, Dynasty Warriors 5 is a lazy cash grab with barely anything to make itself worth existing. The downgraded storytelling, the lazy voice acting, the barely improved combat, and oh so much more just helps make this an easy not recommended. Hmm. I wanted to give this game a fair chance, but I've always hated this game since I was a kid. I only ever liked the Empire's expansion and that's it. Extreme Legends was a total disaster and now the base game is no different but it's less offensive than Extreme Legends in terms of what it has to offer. Yet, that's not enough. If you only ever played 5, you'll find it great. Except if you play Dynasty Warriors 4, then you'll see it for what it really is. A cash grab. My life, a pleasure, gone. Oh well, not every single game will be a winner. Despite what the subreddit for Warriors games will tell you, there must always be a bad game in a series. There's plenty of terrible Metal Gear games, for example, despite the fanbase telling you everything is like God himself made it. Blast for me. Ah, ah. But fanboys will be fanboys, and I'll never fanboy. I'll always look at a game for what it is and review it as such, despite how many fanboys I'll trigger along the way. Get out of my way. Anyways, that's it for this video. See y'all later. I fight only for myself. And nobody else. 
This land is mine.